John, we may have to put in the budget um, additional bookshelving for you because that looks like it's going to fall down. It does, yeah. There's a lot. <laughs> I got that's, that's a lot of years of budgets just hanging there. <laughs> yeah, that, that might be a line item on our next budget. <laughs> I, I usually I usually purge during the holidays, get rid of all the dated stuff. I haven't done it yet. <laughs> yeah, you hate to throw it away. I know. Yeah. <laughs> All right, the meeting is now live. All right, fantastic. Good morning, everyone. Um, ben Wenegrad, Chair of Public Works, Facilities, and Sustainability. And we'll open up this meeting through the uh, the miracle of Zoom. I'm down in Atlanta right now. So um, if we have any connectivity problems, I will try to get back on. Um, and we have here with us Mark Zidanowitz and Mayor Sherry Cantor. Um, and uh, Councilperson uh, Deb Pullen is on as well. Um, apologies if, uh, for my part for having sort of moved around the dates of this, uh, times and dates. Uh, so if anybody wanted to get on and couldn't, um, all on me, uh, from some, some scheduling problems. So, um, but we did want to obviously get this, uh, going and, um, we have, uh, one major topic on the agenda and then we'll get to our staff report. Uh, I'll take a motion to approve. I don't know. Actually, we get the minutes. I'm, I don't think we had minutes, so we'll skip the approval of minutes uh, until our next uh, session and, and hopefully uh, cover uh, two meetings worth when we do that. Um, and uh, before I open it up to Rick um, to talk about and and John talk about uh, materials management, I just want to say this, we've been getting uh, a lot of letters, of course, um, on this topic um, and. My guess is that we have more people watching than typically. I hope so. Um, and just want to say, listen, we are. Uh, uh, it's great to have such uh, enthusiasm over over recycling. Um, and you know, I'm sure. Uh, uh, you know, J John's certainly been pitching uh, ideas uh, for years and often struggling to get attention uh, and to get people really motivated. So. Um, you know, I know we've had, you know, uh, sort of some disputes, you know, this month as to exactly how to do it. Um, but I think the, the thing to focus on, uh, particularly is the broader issue is that we've got a great, uh, great interest in town of doing something positive for the, for the environment. Um, and if we have, uh, multiple companies that are interested in doing something, that's great too. Um, because we're all trying to, you know, do the right thing for the planet. Um, and, uh, and ultimately for. Our town budget as well. So, um, I want to thank everybody who's uh, written us um, and called, um, and uh, and just you know assure everybody that we're all on the exact same page as to the ultimate goal here, which is making West Hartford as sustainable um, and environmentally conscious as we possibly can. So, with that, um, uh, I'll turn it over to Rick if you could sort of walk us through, you know, where we're at and how we got here, and uh, what do you think? Okay. Yeah, thank you, and Mr. I Chairman. Carol uh, Anderson uh, has joined as well, so we've got the full committee. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Rick Ledwood, Town Manager. Good morning, everyone. Um, as the Chairman said, we have uh, really one item on the agenda today. We we won't have any staff reports. Uh, we'll defer the staff reports to the next month, given the in importance of this topic. Um, and um, you know, as, as the Chairman said, uh, this is a very important topic. Uh, to our community, the future of waste management in Connecticut, uh, and that topic is the, the Sustainable Material Management Grant uh, that we were recently awarded from the State Department of Energy and Environmental Protection. Um, as, as, as the chairman outlined, um, this topic has generated a lot of interest from our community. Uh, and we've received uh, somewhere north of uh, 100 emails uh, from residents uh, who are as Mr. Chairman said, very interested in the topic and are presently separating food waste from their wet, uh, regular waste utilizing a company uh, called Blue Earth. Uh, many of the emails were focused on requesting that we go out to bid for the pilot program, which I can say that we are prepared to, to send the pilot program out to bid. Um, but despite all this attention, as the Chairman had said, we're actually really excited to see this kind of interest because for us, that means that the community is is really ready for this movement. 
Um, as our council knows, John Phillips, our director of public works, uh, had the vision to remove food waste from our regular waste many years ago. And when we tried to roll out a similar program townwide, our community just wasn't ready to embrace that concept at that time. Uh, then again, in 2017, uh, when we went out to bid for all of our waste management, John again had the vision uh, to move in this direction by having a supplemental portion of the RFP process dedicated to separating food waste in our schools. Today, with the help of Catherine Bruns, our recycling coordinator, who's on the call with us this morning as well, our schools, uh, volunteers from our community, we're collecting over four tons of food waste uh, to date from six schools. We just added our sixth school uh, uh, over the last couple of weeks, and that's Morley Elementary School. And so what all this means is, is West Hartford is ready now, uh, not just for this pilot program, which will take us through the next year, um, but sub sometime after that pilot program is done, having a separate food waste collection town-wide. Uh, and we're confident uh, that this pilot program will be successful and will work very closely with our residents participating in the uh, program throughout the next nine to 12 months. And then we look forward to working with the town council to set a future townwide program. So that's that's our vision. That's where we see this going. Um, so I will uh, I'll stop there, Mr. Chairman. I will turn things over to Mr. Phillips who has a PowerPoint presentation that we did upload on Civic Clerk as well. And uh, it's a short PowerPoint, but John will walk us through some of the details of the program, and then we can turn it back over to uh, to the council for questions. So through Great. you, Mr. Chairman, I will turn it over to Mr. Phillips. Thank John, you. you should be able to. Yep, I'll be able to share. Uh, thank okay. you. Good morning, everybody. John Phillips, the Director of Public Works. Um, uh, Rick, uh, Rick, actually the town manager, uh, teed, teed this topic off very well. Obviously, most of the council members uh, present today are, are familiar with this. I have talked about the uh, town receiving this grant uh, from DEP, um, but for the benefit of obviously a lot of people watching, I think it's important to um, really roll out the grant in a more formal fashion. That's really what the PowerPoint does, walks us through the grant and the purpose and, the, and kind of the goals and objectives of it. So I'm going to share this uh, PowerPoint. I do. Is it Cherry now? Correct. Yep. It is. Yep. Okay. All right. Good morning again. It's uh, the grant that we received is is through a committee through DEP. And it's called the Sustainable Materials Management Grant. Um, uh, really, and it's so it's addressing the sustainable material management grant is addressing the challenge, which is uh, the state's waste disposal crisis. It's designed to help municipalities achieve ambitious waste reduction and recycling goals and combat escalating trash disposal costs due to the state's decreased disposal capacities. The Connecticut Department of Energy and Environmental Protection has issued uh, the Sustainable Material Management Grant, uh, better known as SMM <coughs> program, as pursuing a public act. It's basically authorizing DEP to spend $5 million to assist municipalities through this grant program. West Hartford is one of 15 uh, municipalities and three uh, regional groups across the state that are awarded the funds. Um, I believe there are three communities, uh, North Haven, Ansonia, and Middletown, that have already started their programs, um, very similar to what we're uh, introducing here for West Hartford as a pilot program. So the waste disposal crisis. The trash disposal capacity in Northeast is shrinking quickly. Landfills closing and waste energy uh, facilities are reaching or exceeding their end of useful lives. Trash in Connecticut is disposed of at five time, uh, in five waste energy facilities, all of which are more than 30 years old, with the largest such facility currently working on a closure plan, and that's the one located in Hartford along the river. You see it uh, on the side of 19, uh, Interstate 91. It is highly unlikely that additional waste disposal capacity will be created in Connecticut or surrounding states. Since 1990, the number of landfills in the United States has declined by 80% from 6,000 to 1,200. And I, and I think I'm being polite by saying highly unlikely. I don't see any vision where we'll increase waste capacity in Connecticut. Increasing amounts of trash um, are trucked out of state. Over 330,000 tons are shipped out last year alone. So where does it go and what happens to it? 
these are these are a number of issues, most notably environmental justice issues and just losing capacity of putting uh, trash in a hole. The fiscal impact of the of the disposal crisis and for West Hartford specifically, um, basically the rapid decline of waste disposal capacity and the cost of disposal of trash is increasing. Public Works projects the the cost um, for over the next five years will exceed $130 a ton. That's basically a 33% increase of where we are now. Um, and I think I'm very conservative in saying 130. West Hartford's tip fees are anticipated to exceed 120 as soon as July 1st, 2024 or FY25, which we're currently building FY24's budget. So the next fiscal budget will be looking at these uh, numbers. Uh, our current tip fees are, are $96 a ton. Tip fees for organic materials is 67% of MSW. The potential, the, a potential future savings for the town as more and more waste can be diverted. <clears throat> West Harford's responsibilities. Municipalities are mandated through state statute to provide for the safe and sanitary disposal of all solid waste, which is generated within our boundaries. The majority of that disposal of trash can be reduced, reused, recycled, or composted. In 2021, West Hartford's recycling rate was 33.5%. That's a very decent uh, rate, um, but it's not nearly where we need to be to, to drive down our waste. Public Works managed 27,175 tons of waste materials in fiscal year 22 that just ended this past June. And that's all the materials that we manage, recyclables, yard waste, MSW, steel, bulky waste, et cetera. A lot of different characterizations of that tonnage, but 27,000 tons is a significant amount of waste that, that Public Works is tasked to manage. So increasing what is diverted from the MSW will have many benefits. It will certainly reduce the cost the residents and taxpayers pay to dispose of trash. It will reduce pollution, including climate change causing gases such as methane and carbon dioxide. And then it does, it will support the creation of new jobs in material recycling and reuse and composting. Continuing with West Hartford's responsibilities, uh, according to the Environmental Protection Agency, 42% of all greenhouse gases are related to um, material management decisions, the very decisions that Public Works is, is charged with uh, taking on. Improving recycling, composting, material reuse um, will allow the town to sustainably reduce greenhouse gas emissions through better decision on our material management. West Hartford already has a very popular nine month yard waste curbside collection program. And as uh, town manager indicated, we are separating and diverting our food waste in our school cafeterias and our school year to date is 4.66 tons. And we're in six schools. We hope to now move it to our seventh school now that we just finished up uh, bringing more leaks uh, online. So here's the pilot program. It's a food waste diversion and unit based pricing pilot program. To assist municipalities achieve a waste reduction and, and recycling goals, um, this is this is where the grant comes in and the five million dollars are authorized. The purpose of West Hartford's uh, sustainable material grant project is a year-long pilot project, including three months of education and outreach. It's projected to reduce waste up to forty percent and increase recycling. The pilot will be combined with collection of food waste with a unit-based pricing or UBP for a municipal solid waste collection. So, um, so the pilot program logistics, a nine month supply of orange trash bags will be provided, green food waste bags will be provided, along with educational material. They'll all be delivered to the residents within the pilot area. All pilot households will receive a five gallon food scrap bucket to be put at the curb each week on their trash day. Residents will see will receive a code for an online app. The app will be uh, a place for information, education, and questions. The town will host several education sessions leading up to the launch of the pilot about the program, along with recycling and composting workshops. Additional logistics, again, we're looking at a 700 household pilot area, and they'll be asked to participate to separate food waste from their trash. Trash and food waste will be collected on the same day as a, as a, as a regular scheduled day, and, and, but they'll be collected in two separate collections. Food waste uh, will be taken to Quantum Biopower, Biopower in Sunnington, where it will be turned into a biogas and compost. 
Residents will be asked to use the orange trash bag for the pilot duration. The goal is to use one orange bag per week, which should be enough once all food waste is diverted and other recyclables are diverted. The orange bags are to be placed in the green waste barrel as you put your trash today, so nothing changes there. Recycling remains the same as it, does, as it is today. The Sustainable Material Grant uh, is innovative, new waste separation and collection process. It will reduce waste, it will manage residential organics in a sustainable manner. The root collection portion of the pilot will last nine months. Staff will uh, be continually evaluating the program throughout and determining future actions for the town. Part of the education process, the state has contracted through this uh, a grant, a marketing firm that will produce promotional materials such as uh, the flyers you see here for social media, for social and other media sources. All promotion and information material um, is included as part of the grant and can be shared amongst all towns, trying to make everybody an influencer here and make change. That's it in a quick nutshell for this purpose of this meeting. I'm sure there's a lot of questions. Um, my personal editorial on this is that um, we've been uh, trying to uh, move this way for a long time. Um, I recognize the um, importance of it. Sorry, I got to get back to I'm trying to block off it. Uh, how do I unshare? I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm trying to figure out how to unshare. John, can you click on the share button itself? Is there a right at the bottom? I'm not seeing that. Oh yeah, there we go. Yep, stop. There okay. you go. My apologies. I was looking at the wrong screen. I, I do apologize for that that mental technical difficulty. Again, so uh, my personal tool is here. This, this I, I know this is a very big ask. Um, my experience. And talking about this has been uh, enlightening as well as educational for me personally. Um, I've learned a lot and, um, and I think the community has learned a lot over the last five years. Um, this is transformational. This is habit changing. This is habit changing at your kitchen table right to the curb. Um, I wish I could have another program or options to show comparables, but I just, and in five years, I've not found one that will actually reduce waste and divert waste where it can be more a process better than sending everything out of state um, into a landfill. Um, I think the crisis is real, um, and I think Connecticut is, is in, a, in a very difficult position having to rely on other states and their landfill capacities for, the, for eternity, for, for the long term as far as I can see. Um, I'm concerned about the cost and the, uh, our valuable tax dollars, very valuable tax dollars having to go towards really end of life waste programs when they're more needed for education, public safety, and public works infrastructure work. Um, but I, I don't want to be too naive to think that this is this is an easy ask. This will be difficult. This will be a challenge. But I think it's a challenge that's worthy we take on and uh, something that I think West Hartford is well suited with, with the right form of education outreach. I think we can make this uh, very successful and maybe be a staple for not only Connecticut, but maybe the region. I'm happy to take any questions on the uh, pilot program that you council will soon be having to make a decision on. Uh, thank you very much, John. Um, uh, let me. Do, I think there are sort of two broad uh, areas that we should tackle. One is um, the details of exactly how the how the pilot will work in terms of um, of pickup, and, and I certainly want to have any questions on that. Um, the second sort of broader issue is more generally because it came up as a sort of controversy is the bidding process um, and how that you know normally works and how it'll work in this case. Um, uh, maybe cover that at the at the end um, once we've sort of talked about the uh, the pilot itself. Yeah, uh, the important work here. So, um, and just I'll, I'll start off with just one question on that is. You mentioned two pickups, but we're actually talking about potentially four a day because of the, uh, the recycling and brown bin weeks. Correct. The the overall, I believe, the future look of trash, and this is um this is not this we won't be pioneers in this. Uh, it's 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 happening in communities all across this country. Um, you'll have 
basically four separated material, you know, uh, spots at, at your curb. You'll have a, a green cart for your trash. You'll have your typical blue cart for recyclables. You'll have um, the opportunity to obviously move your yard waste organics, vegetation waste, brown barrel or brown bags. And then you'll be adding the food waste as a separate collectible item. Um, and so, yeah, for right for right now, snapshot of where we're moving, yeah, it would be theoretically a four four barrels yeah, at the curb line to be collected and, and, and do that. Uh, again, um, there's no other efficient way to achieve what we need to achieve. And, and what we'll be we'll, we'll be measuring not only the uh, the new collection for food waste, but also um, how the regular trash and recycling, you know, blue bin and green bin are doing. I know I'm certainly Catherine. I know has been uh, working avidly to try to get people to do the right thing in terms of the the blue bins and not over recycle. Um, and you know the Obviously, one concern is if we're having people put trash in the orange bag, if they fill it up again, there's that temptation to put it in the blue bin. Um, I don't think the green, I don't think the, uh, the organic waste piece will get that problem of contamination, but certainly, um, you know, we don't want to increase the, the blue bin contamination of regular trash. So I assume that'll be sort of part of how we're measuring this. You're right. And so, the, so for the pilot itself, the key measuring point is obviously uh, participation in food diversion, right? Trying to uh, um, get the house, the participant households, to change the process and, and start diverting food waste. We're moving from your typical MSW. The second observation is: Are we reducing the weight of MSW? Are we bringing that weight down in this pilot area because we're diverting um, the the unit based pricing piece? Um, though we like people try to drive and, and move towards a single bag, which is the high end goal. But as you move on, if we were to, for example, we were going to some sort of program or permanency, you can certainly do two bags, but it's, you've got to pay for that extra bag, you know, depending on your waste, your waste consumption. And that's an individual issue uh, at per household. But then obviously the goal is to get to one bag. Um, and so we want to see, make sure that waste is going downward because we're diverting and where people are paying more attention um, and through education and properly recycling. Um, and that, that's the ultimate goal at the end of this. Is, is, did waste go down? Are we diverting food? And, and have we not made a significant uh, negative impact on our recyclables by increasing contamination? Contamination, well, I think, will always be a part of waste management from today until the foreseeable future, until something else comes up that's the, the next great thing. Um, but that's, that's the goal of this pilot is to see if we can drive down our waste get people to transform their habits, get those comments about transforming the habits, move the food waste into its proper waste category, um, and also maintain a high quality level of recyclables by minimizing contamination. Great, okay, well, thank you. So open up any, uh, any questions from, uh, start with committee members. Carol. Thank you, Ben. Um, thank you, John. Um, I, I love to hear your uh, report and all of the um, great uh, objectives and goals for the future, especially around this issue. So a couple of people have reached out um, to me and what I'm thinking about is just real, real time and real issues as we begin to uh, experience um, the pilot and then hopefully after the pilot. So from what you just described, it sounds like on that pickup day, it will be a bit challenging for folks as they begin this process with the number of barrels and the number of bags. So I just want to pivot a bit just to mother nature in terms of as the weather begins to change and what we experienced last night with the winds and whatnot in terms of the bags and their durability in terms of being able to withstand mm -hmm. uh, mother nature. Cause we know sometimes on garbage days, um, I don't know, sometimes they fly around or what have you. So is that a potential um, in this case? I, great question. And, I, and I'm glad you asked it cause I, I'll provide a little clarity on it. Um, first of all, West Harvard is just starting and building our, you know, playbook, if you would, on the on the program itself. And Catherine Bruns is leading that charge with working with um, uh, grant program management uh, at DEP's level. 
we probably won't we won't be launching ours the legit the actual collection until probably April of, of 2023. We'll spend the winter of the education and outreach, um, and and so that's so that's when we'll start the program. So weather weather should be better for people to, to start learning new habits, right? And that and that was a very um, important part for me. Um, I did not want to start heading into winter. Um, so weather exists today as it, as it will in the future. Whether what we do with, with waste management. Um, the bags that you're talking about, the bags will not be set at the curb. Your green, your orange garbage bag, if you just talk about the unit based pricing one, that will go in your cart like your garbage does now. So it will be contained. But if we, as a, as a society and our residents, if we all start putting, you know, uh, um, our waste and have it bagged, you'll have less loose trash, right? So that if it does tip over, the bags are durable. Um, uh, and we would expect to make sure bags continue to stay durable in the future. So that if if a bet if a cart your 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 large cart that you put at the curbside does tip over because of wind or the plow truck knocks it over, it's the bag rolling out and not a ton of loose materials. However, in your recycling area, obviously you don't have that because we promote put things in there loose, and that's that's just because of the way that system works. Um, and then your food waste will go in a five gallon, um, like a painter's bucket, a large paint bucket, but it's a five gallon bucket. On one of the slides, there was a picture of it at, at, at the doorstep. So it's a little larger, it's capacity. So you'll take your green, uh, your food waste bag and you'll set it in there and it's got a locking lid and you'll just set that pail at the end of the curb. And then the trash collection team will come and collect that open lid, take the bag out, dump it, and then move on to the next resident. So what you'll have in front of your house will be all containers, all bags will be in a container um, and it'll be as neat as possible considering the, you know, the ills of trash, right? Um, but it, again, uh, uh, we're trying to make this as efficient as possible, but still achieve the environmental and obviously uh, fiscal goals of this program. Thank you. I hope they give yeah. a better picture of what, what you were describing. Uh, thanks, John. During the um, pilot program, will there be an opportunity um, for those particular residents to collect compost at the end of it? And then do you anticipate um, when this gets rolled out that the all the residents would have an opportunity to gather compost for their gardens and such? And um, wondering how that may look. And also, too, you know, it's funny. I guess this is like bell bottoms because what in fashion, what was once is now again. Um, I don't know how many people remember, but I grew up in a in in a in a town where we had one of those um buried garbage containers by our garage and that's where a lot of the waste went food waste and then we also had one in our garden and my grandmother kept the bag by her sink and and would put it out in the garden as well around some uh you know um rabbit fencing or deer fencing or chicken whatever they call that fencing and 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 i don't know it got out of favor right and then i don't know what happened um and now here we are again, but it's something that we've been doing for a long time. So I'm, I'm glad we're getting back there. Um, and I'm kind of excited about it. I, I could use some, some good compost. I'm, I'm kind of mad at myself for not doing it in my own, my own backyard. So just. Mark, great questions, Mark. And, and you're right. I also grew up in a home that had a, had a side yard, um, in ground, uh, a garbage pail with a, the steel metal lid on it. And, uh, my, you know, it was one of my chores actually on a Saturday to make sure it was painted in the spring and kept clean because my dad kept on me on that. But you're right. And you're right. We have, we, this is almost a full circle, right? Totally evolving and back to where we started at one time in society. And I think that time frame from then until now, it just, we went through a period of time where it needed to be super quick, super efficient because we had massive holes in you know, for landfills. We had, we had space to do something with our trash. And uh, obviously, we're facing that um, we're facing that issue head on because that that doesn't exist today, and so that's why we need to go back to uh, uh, proper recycling, proper diverting, and separating our waste. Um, you know, I, I say this, you know, kind of tug in cheek, but it's true. We separate everything in our lives. We separate our laundry. We you know we got after work clothes from our work clothes. We separate our food and our pantries. You know, canned goods, dry goods. We, I'm sure you're like, if you're the freezers like mine, I've got chicken here and beef. We separate everything, but when it comes to trash, we just wrap it up in one big pile and we just want it to go away. And so we've got to adapt that same mentality we have on everything else we do in life 
as as well as to our trash and bring it out to the curb. Um, on the composting area, um, I, I want to be clear, and so there's no misunderstanding. I'm not sure of our ability to provide compost to every single resident. I know Blue Earth as a subscription company now does offer that as a part of their level of services that you pay for as an individual subscription. If we're going through the pilot program and then stepping forward, if we were to move forward to a townwide uh, program, it would be a logistical. It would be a logistical challenge to offer twenty one thousand households an opportunity at compost. Maybe we could provide at our new material solution center a area where they can you know come get it themselves, like we do now with you know you know uh, winter sand things like that. Uh, we can look at those opportunities, uh, but it will be very difficult as a program to return the next day or whenever, you know, when the material's ready and deliver compost back to residents. Because again, we deal with 21,000 collections and we got to get 5,000 done a day, uh, Monday through Friday. Yeah, thank you. I, I'm sorry, I didn't anticipate you guys having to deliver it. Yep. Uh, something that where we could, the residents could pick it up like you talked about, I think would be reasonable. I, I think it would actually be kind of unreasonable to uh, expect it delivered, but, um, right free at least but yeah so if there's an opportunity for us the residents to pick up some of that compost in the future that might be uh, a good idea too so we'll definitely certainly take that in consideration mark okay, thank you for the idea may i just add one thing mark to your point about things coming full circle and getting back in fashion so uh we'll, we'll, the, the department of public works will continue to also offer our backyard composting workshops and the twice a year events that we've had where we've sold the backyard composting bin those have been incredibly popular and I get emails all the time. When's the next event going to be? So I think these things will go in tandem. You know, we want to have the pilot program, of course, but we'll continue to loop the whole town in on ways they can get involved with composting and then um, taking more material out of their solid waste. Like the next thing I want to get on is textiles. Only 15% of textiles are ever recycled. And, you know, we throw away a lot of that. There's a lot of things we can be taking out so that trash can fit you know, ideally in one orange bag. Uh, thank you. Any questions, Mayor? Thank you very much. Um, and uh, John has been talking about this for of such a long time. And I, I, you know, as a as a community, we we are. Um, I, you know, I I wish we were a a, a real. Um, John's been a leader. I wish our community had been out in front a little bit more robustly. Uh, it is one of the regrets I have that we're not a little further along in this process. But and it's not because of John, um, to be honest. It's uh, it's it is our our residents. Uh, I, I think and some, some of our elected officials weren't quite uh, as committed to making the change uh, that is needed. And it, as John said, it's difficult. This is not going to be something that people are going to be. Um, they might be excited initially, but there's hassles and there there it is a commitment um, like we, you know, and, and John has said this for a long time. Trash is a utility we need to pay for what we use and it that has not been the mindset of people in our in our state for sure and surely in our town so we need to understand that when we buy something when we when we use it when we serve it when we you know we're gonna have to pay for figuring out how to get rid of it uh and so Again, it's it's a, just a mindset. I also, you know, John has been committed to the unit based pricing. Uh, this is something that he said the only way for us to truly re reduce trash. And I pushed back and said, for a social equity issue, we have residents that uh, can't eat. Um, you know, they need to cook at home. They have more food waste potentially, and we need to provide an avenue for them to get rid of their food waste rather than imposing additional costs on them. So this is part of the process of, of making sure that we have a holistic approach uh, to making sure that, that it, it, it is equitable. People have an avenue uh, to uh, that is convenient uh, uh, to get rid of, of food waste, but also um, understanding that that will reduce the trash. And if they people produce more trash, they should pay for more trash. Um, I have a question on if 
we have the holidays coming up and I, I know on occasion we have a very full house and, and produce more trash uh, than I would like. <laughs> and um, so during the pilot, if somebody has one orange bag, they can purchase another orange bag if that bag is full, correct? Is that yeah, well, see, that, that's a logistic that hasn't been determined yet, and, and obviously that's something I'll have to discuss with uh, with, with town manager uh, Rick Ledwith, and, and obviously I would want a council input on that. So basically, every resident participating resident in the area will probably will get one bag per week. But now the decision is, all right, what do we do if residents need more? Do we sell them a bag or we just give more? And that's that's a decision we have not made yet. But those basically are the two options. So again, obviously we don't want to limit people's opportunity to get rid of trash. We, people will entertain, people will have a birthday party in May for, for a young one or, or, or anybody within the family. Um, so the question is, do we, do we offer free bags within the pilot or is it a chargeable piece? Um, and again, that's a decision that we can make, uh, not necessarily here today, but we'll make that for before we roll it out. Um, but just know that there will be an opportunity to still throw out more trash, certainly. Um, uh, and, but the, because the goal is not to stop it or limit your ability, but to really just harness it and make sure that, right, that we're only collecting trash and we're getting everything else diverted properly. Thank you. And um, my other question, um, I had two other questions that on the logistics. So we, we've we obviously had a, a concern about bears uh, in our area and increase. And how does putting out the food waste and the bins that will uh, be out there increase potentially uh, the risk of, you know, of bear interaction and blah, blah. Unscientifically in talking to communities that already do food waste uh, collection uh, and our, our closest neighbor is doing it a long time and probably has a larger bear population than we do, albeit they have more land mass, uh, um, um, Brattleboro, Vermont. Um, and they actually set their food waste in a bag at the curb, a straight up plastic mm. bag. They don't put it in a container. Mm -hmm. um, but let's step back a little bit. The material's already in our garbage, right? It's already being set out to the curb, obviously, because we, you know we we have we've seen the interaction with bears on and, and occasions. Um, so it's not a new material that we're asking residents to put at the curb. It's already there. We're just source separating, and it. it's just going to be in a different container. So it won't increase the opportunity for bears. The opportunity will will be status quo, and it'll be organic to whatever bears in that neighborhood and what's in that barrel and what he decides to do. Again, like we tell residents who have um, bears that um, tip over their, their uh, waste cart now, obviously housekeeping is important, right? Removing the splash of any kind of waste that might be inside there. So always keeping your barrel clean, using ammonias and, and other bleach products to clean it. Um, so, so, the, so the residue of those products stay there that deters bears. Uh, and obviously just securing the bags tightly, locking it in the container that's provided will limit any kind of airflow outward to attract the bears. So the, I, I'm confident in saying there's no increased risk. The risk will remain because we're not we're not adding material. We're just it's we're just changing it and putting it in a different bucket. Okay. And um, the quantum you you had said that the food waste would go to quantum, mm -hmm. and that's what happens with our current school food waste that we are Correct. currently yep. doing. Um, is that part of the of the contra of uh, the grant process that quantum is taking that, or is there flexibility there? I just I I just wanted a clarification on that. No, I don't know. That, that is a part of the grant quantum a uh, biopower, and we're lucky. We're sorry for geographically, we're so close to quantum, just being in Southington, so we can direct haul to them. Um, that, that's a, that, again, fortunate to be in that position. Um, right now, currently, the inf there's no other infrastructure but quantum to produce a natural gas, recycle the food to, you know, to a, to a, a, a biogas, and then create the compost as a back end product. So, you know, full, full clean recycling on this particular uh, material item food. Um, you know, the, there's just no other options right now. But so quantum, quantum would be the way we deliver our food waste. Okay. Um... Thank you. And just to follow Catherine, thank you so much too for everything you do. Um, the textile. So is the pink textile, I, I have not had, I put mine out in a while, but are we not, um, is that not happening now or? No, I actually just emailed our contact with pink bag uh, last week because a resident said that they called and the, they didn't come and pick it up. And so actually I need to follow up, but he said, oh no, we're very much, you know, having the program unlike before where you would put it out on your recycling day now you have to call and schedule a pickup but they're still very much picking up and it doesn't have to be in the pink bag you just label it simple recycling okay or, or Thank email, you. and then they should come 
pick it up. So, okay. Thank you. Just a, a refresher. So, um, and one other question on the on the grant program and education. Uh, Seven hundred homes. That's because of the amount of the grant. That's what we think we can mm -hmm. handle within that grant dollar limit, right? So, um, but the education piece and other people, uh, we want to really prepare our community now for. So the education piece included in the grant, is that townwide education or is it really specific to that to that grant population? I didn't know what that. I, I think it can be both, Catherine, right? I, I, I think it can be both. And I think, I, Ray, I think you bring a good point. It should be both. Certainly we've got to drill in on our participants so they have, they're, they're, we can remove any anxiety they may have in participating with a grant. Uh, interesting, I got a call from somebody who didn't want to participate, and I said, well, I want you to participate because I want to see why it's not feasible for your household. Um, so we, obviously it's going to be geared towards the, the participants, but I think I think it's I think it's worthy that we make sure that it's as broadcasted so everybody realizes what their neighbor's doing and, and how it's going and progress they're making. Because again, that will probably help in this transformational uh, uh, process we're going through. And at the end of the day, when we have to make that full decision on what to do next, coming out of this grant or this pilot program. Thank you. And there's one other um, kind of summary. I think that I, I'd like to hear from you when you said that uh, you 33% you, of um, the cost is going up about 33. What do we currently spend with our $96 tip fee uh, spent on uh, solid waste? Um, well, we, we currently collect roughly um, on any given year where we, we did a touch over 18,000 tons of MSW and that $96 a ton was applied to that. So if we don't bring down that um, 18,000 number um, uh, and, or if it grows, the 120, the 130 and beyond will be applied to that tonnage amount. That's the, that's the MSW. That's the highest rated valued material that we have to dispose of. And again, the drivers are bringing that up because uh, we'll, we'll lose the capacity of, of, of uh, waste to energy. And so the trucking costs, the out-of-state costs, the rail costs, it starts adding a lot of different a new costs of how we handle our trash today in the very, very near future. Like I said, we, I'm anticipating uh, July 1st of 24, we'll, we'll jump right to 120 a ton in a single year. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. If there are other questions on, Sort of the those details I, I would like to sort of talk a little bit about the bidding process um and, and john i want to hear about this bit of work maybe generally a uh, rick what the um sort of how when we put things out to bid how that bidding process works generally and then then talk about uh with john you know what what this bid would look like sure uh thank you mr chairman <laughs> so first um just I'll go back a little bit in terms of, um, you know, we didn't necessarily have to go out to bid here. I think, you know, we have talked about that with the council um, and as well as some folks out, out in the community as well. So, you know, when I talked about going back to 2017 and the work and John's vision from back then and, and even predating that, and I, I've been a, a director alongside John for a dozen years and, and we meet as directors every Tuesday. And uh, for 12 years, I've, I've listened to this challenge. Um, so it's, I've learned a lot. He's brought me a long way. Um, you know, but with that said, uh, you know, when we went into the bidding process back in 2017, we knew this is where we were going. You know, so we actually designed, wrote the contract in a way that uh, would allow us the flexibility to roll out this type of program that we are about to roll out. So. Uh, and in fact, in 2017, as I mentioned earlier, we did start doing, you know, start looking at it and and other avenues like our schools. So, so we structured the contract in a way that would allow us to do that. Um, you know, and our current vendor has been a true partner. You know, they haven't been a vendor where they collect waste. You know, we know John knew we weren't going to get through the challenges that are facing West Hartford and facing the state of Connecticut and in the Northeast. Uh, without looking and, and talking and, and developing relationships and partnerships with everyone we can, you know, we've talked, you know, among this committee about a future material solution center, you know, and that's, you know, an opportunity that we will 
uh, continue to uh, to implement over the next uh, several months that would allow Brixton Brixton Street deep our public works uh, campus to be used as a potential transfer station, not just for West Hartford, but potentially for other communities as well. So we're thinking wide, broad spectrum of of how we're going to deal with waste management. And I think that that goes into what we were doing back in 2017 and how we wrote that contract. With that being said, you know, we did say we we are, you know, this is important to us. We are going to uh, to bid this out. And I, I did invite our director of finance, Peter Privatera, who's also our purchasing agent. Um, and I'll ask Peter to to kind of walk us through what a typical bid process would be uh, and how that works. Peter, through you, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, Pete Privatera, finance director for the town. Um, I've had some discussions with John and Rick about the approach here. And I think we all agree that uh, we put together a request for proposals, which would give us a better broad based um, uh, uh, avenue of evaluating uh, what companies can do to respond. You know, basically, uh, we would uh, include uh, components like what the price is, the experience of the company, the ability of the company, the capabilities of the company, uh, can they actually execute um, what we require in the scope of services. So I know John right now uh, is in the process of, of, of finishing up a scope. Once John uh, finishes that scope, uh, we'll put out an RF, RFP, um, probably two to three week period, give folks uh, a chance to respond. We'll uh, put together a selection committee to review the proposals and there will be criteria uh, in the RFP and how we will uh, review and award the, uh, the pilot contract. Um, the committee will convene, we'll review the proposals, we'll invite everyone in for an interview or we'll interview the respondents, and then the committee uh, will basically rank them and make a decision and make a recommendation to the town manager on who we feel is the, uh, is the best candidate for the pilot program. That's how we would approach it. Great, thank you. Um, so that, uh, and to be clear, and I, it does, that does not come back to the committee, this is a decision made by administration based on those standards. Correct. Right. Which is as it should be. We don't want to be involved in, uh, that's why we have a town manager, right? Uh, administration said we're not getting involved in the potential politics of, of bidders. Um, uh, and I think that's actually, you know, one of the reasons why the town runs so well is, um, is that we, that sort of thing we leave to the professionals. and. Um, I'm certainly uh, full confidence in in your team's ability to to come up with a fair option, um, best interest of, of the town. So thank you for that. Um, any any questions on that process from anybody on the committee, or not, or anyone here? Carol. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I don't really have a. Uh a question, just more or less a comment. And thank you for that clarification, um, um, both Rick and Pete, and because in my mind, that's kind of how I saw it going. So just thank you for the review. Thank you. And and yes, when I, uh, I, I did say questions, but certainly any comments at this point anybody has um, on this process. Uh, yeah, I think it, uh, we didn't get here quite as cleanly perhaps as it would have liked, but uh, I uh, am certainly satisfied with this outcome and, and appreciate the work of everybody to um, put this together. Um, and I'm excited about the project. I mean, again, with it, go back to the original goal, which is we really hope this pilot succeeds and it can lead us. Um, and I'm sure we'll learn some stuff. I've got, you know, individual concerns about how the logistics of this, but of course those are gonna be why we're doing the pilot to have those come out so um rather than sort of speculate as to what could go wrong let's find out what goes wrong and and then figure out uh uh how to fix that um ben it, it's it's john phil's director of public works again to your point about running the pilot and see how it runs and you know what needs to be fixed or adjusted it's important to note and i think uh catherine bronze has mentioned this in her, at, at her committee level and talking to the committees the unit based pricing and food waste diversion are are have to work they work together you can't have one without the other right um so if you have unit-based pricing you have to have an avenue for the 
the, the other materials to be diverted somewhere else. It's very similar to the mayor's point about um, our folks who have um, economic issues and challenges there and, and, and eat at home and while we produce more food, you have to have that resource. But on the same token, you're not going to really truly have a, a, a beneficial, both fiscally and, and socially beneficial program at food waste diversion if you don't lock your trash into a unit kind of cost structure to make people more intimately involved with what they're consuming and what they're throwing away and how they're throwing it away. So these two programs are interlocked um, and, and, and it'd be very difficult, if not probably wouldn't get a recommendation from me to do one without the other. I don't think you can do one without the other. You need to do them both together, but truly to take advantage of the 40% decreases we're trying to achieve and have a more sustainable um, materials management program across all spectrums of material that we manage. Excellent, thank you. Um, so I think that wraps up that topic. And as you, you noted, um, we don't have anything else on the agenda for today. Um, I'll sort of jump some items. So rather than staff reports, uh, scheduling and future agenda items. Um, aside from getting back to our, our normal reports, do we have anything that you're gonna wanna bring to us at our next meeting? Which then we'll have to schedule because I think we have one coming up. I think we we have one sort of scheduled in a few weeks. Yes, Mr. Chairman, our next one will be scheduled for um, January. Let me look at our. So we, I think we have one scheduled for. No, maybe not. We have one scheduled January. right now for January fifth. Okay. Thursday the fifth. All right. Good. Okay. I do have that. Through um, the chair. Through the chair. Do you have a question. Yep. Again, John Phillips, Director of Public Works. Um, just so I have clarity, because uh, obviously Deep will be asking me, uh, the process of the resolution I, that I think isn't actually a right. packet, the draft resolution, um, uh, does that go to the full council next, or does, it, does this committee still need to vet that? That's a good question. I, I've certainly read it, um, and if we need a vote, I'll certainly entertain a motion on that if everybody's had a chance to look at that. And I'll certainly come to the full council to do the same presentation for the full body. Again, another opportunity to speak to the public as well. Um, exactly. But, but again, that resolution kind of starts moving us because very shortly we'll probably start getting into um, needing to spend money against the grant, and I'll need the town manager to to get the uh, contract authorized right. to accept the grant. Yep. Yeah, I think that I think that makes sense that we should. Uh, Mayor, maybe clarify. Oh, so I just thinking about timing. When do you need? Um... So should uh, the December uh, 13th meeting, I think it, it's. Well, I, I'm, I'm well aware of December 13th meeting being pretty busy. <laughs> so it can wait to the January, 1st January meeting, that's fine. Um, I just want to know the process so I can make sure what we're managing here lines up with the full acceptance of the grant through the resolution. And then obviously the endorsement of the contract with the, uh, with the grant pro program with, with DEP. DEP is requiring a resolution and a grant to be authorized by the town's elected officials or a CEO. Right. I, I don't, I think DED does allow the town manager as CEO to, to do that, but I think it would be good to have, uh, uh, you know, a, a recommendation out of the committee. I don't think it's necessarily a vote, but a strong recommendation out of the committee to, um, to the council. Uh, and then uh, at the, when you present, I think it, it you know, would be helpful for Ben uh, to summarize uh, for our public. That That's the way I would see it. All right, that that sounds good. So we'll, uh, I, I think we have consensus on this uh, from the committee. I see nods, very good. Um, and uh, right when we'll, yeah, 13th might not be the best day for it, but we'll definitely get it on uh, quickly. It sounds good. If there's nothing else, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Anna. I see a nod for a second. So we we are adjourned and and, and thank you uh, uh, all for attending and, and again for everybody's great work on this. Thanks everyone. Thank, thank you. you. Thank Bye. you everybody.